to Rafinha. If you happen to watch this video and you're looking for a new agent, which it sounds like you might be, call me. I'm, I'm available. What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you a video today to break down and share my own opinions on the whole Rafinha Adidas lawsuit situation that just got settled in court yesterday with Rafinha being on the losing end of this battle. So for those that are completely unaware of this situation, here is the breakdown. Rafinha has been and technically still is an Adidas endorsed athlete. And a lot of people don't realize this about pro athletes in general, but they sign endorsement deals with major sports manufacturers. In this case, Adidas, who is paying Rafinha to effectively wear and advertise their products, specifically the football boots on his feet. Now he signed a contract whenever he signed this contract, likely a couple of years ago, and the complication in the situation came as of July 1st, 2018, this past summer, where Rafinha was under the impression, including his agent, who also happens to be his father, were under the impression that as of July 1st, their contract with Adidas was over and he would effectively be a free agent when it comes to the football boots that he wants to wear, meaning that he doesn't have any active endorsement deals, therefore he can wear and advertise whoever he wants for free or not for free, which is when we saw him make the switch from Adidas boots into fully blacked out Mizunos. For those that were wondering what he was wearing, he was wearing the Mizuno Morelia Neo 2. Now it is very important to note here that the Mizuno boots that Rafinha did wear in a match were fully blacked out, meaning that Mizuno likely had absolutely nothing to do with sending him these boots or paying him to wear the boots. And even if they did, there would technically be nothing wrong with that, I would think. It doesn't seem like Mizuno is involved in this lawsuit whatsoever. This just seems to be Rafinha wearing the boots that he wants to wear without any kind of money involved. And the reason why they're blacked out is he's not trying to give any kind of free advertising to anybody, even though obviously we can clearly see that they're Mizuno boots. If the logo was bright white against a black background. It's a little bit of a different story, but again, he was trying to hide the brand rather than just wear Mizuno boots openly. This is actually common practice with any pro footballer who becomes a boot free agent. We recently saw this with Dybala, who had his Nike contract expired. He was wearing blacked out Superflies. He actually controversially put on his own logo and then eventually he signed a deal with Adidas and started wearing Adidas brand boots. He wasn't gonna give Nike or any other brand any kind of free advertising during that free agent period, which totally makes sense. Now here's where the story takes a bit of an interesting twist because it kind of sounds pretty straightforward up until this point. He signs a contract with Adidas, wears Adidas products throughout the entirety of that contract. At the end of the contract, July 1st, 2018, once it has expired, he stops wearing Adidas boots and wears these blacked out Mizunos that are blacked out because he has not signed a new deal with any brand, even Mizuno, at that point in time. But why would Adidas go and sue him if the contract expired? And that's because the contract didn't actually expire. It was extended by five years on July 1st, 2018. This is the reason why I didn't wanna make a video on this topic when this lawsuit first launched because I was really confused as to why a big brand like Adidas would sue one of their own endorsed athletes. It's just not something that we see very often. We see the athletes sue the companies that they are paid to represent sometimes. Fellaini, the most recent example, when he sued New Balance for not being able to provide him with boots that were quote unquote comfortable, he ended up losing that lawsuit by the way. But for a big brand like Adidas, to go after a guy like Rafinha, one of tons and tons and tons of players that they pay to wear their boots. It just seems strange to me, but obviously they felt like they were in the right and Rafinha was in the wrong. And based on the judgment of this particular lawsuit, that proved to be 100% correct. So here are the particulars of this deal, which bear with me because it's a little bit confusing. Rafinha signed this contract with the Adidas brand to endorse their products for X amount of time leading up to July 1st, 2018, when that contract would expire. Obviously that date came, which is when Rafinha stopped wearing Adidas boots and started wearing these blacked out Mizunos. Anything that wasn't an Adidas product was going to trigger Adidas because under their contract that Rafinha signed, he was actually renewed as of July 1st for another five years. Here's the thing, in that initial contract, there was a clause in the contract that at the end of that initial term, come July 1st, 2018, if nothing was renegotiated or nothing was terminated, it would automatically renew for another five years. And it looks like Rafinha, his agent, whoever his legal representation was for this particular deal, 
did not do that part of what he assumed would be the end of his contract. And it's worth noting as well that Rafinha's agent, as far as I understand, is his father, who I'm going to assume does not have a lot of experience in this department. And likely Rafinha, his son, is probably the first professional athlete that he's ever represented. So the fault in this particular deal, while it might sound a little bit scummy on Adidas's part for having some kind of auto renew part in the contract, Rafinha signed it, his agent would have had to go over it. His legal representation is responsible here. And I'm going to assume as well that what Adidas has done here with this auto renewal is probably some kind of a pretty standard thing when it comes to endorsement deals. Deals. They want to make the best possible deal for themselves to have the best players in the world wear their products for probably as little as possible. So that's why this clause in the contract exists. And it's just based on pure negligence from Rafinha and his agents part that this deal got extended for another five years and didn't expire at the time that they thought it would. So basically to sum that up, Rafinha thought his contract ended on July 1st. Adidas knew legally that it had not expired. It had in fact been extended by five years. So when Rafinha started wearing boots that weren't made by Adidas, they had grounds to sue him, which they did. Now you might be asking yourself, why didn't Rafinha just comply with Adidas's wishes and continue to wear the boots as per his endorsement deal that he had signed in a contract and basically agreed to? There was no way out of this contract. And I think the answer to that question has a lot to do with ego and the fact that he thought that if he went to court and said the right things, that he might be able to get out of it and then go and try and negotiate a better deal to pay him more money with another brand. But obviously that didn't work out. His legal grounds and kind of somewhat of a counter lawsuit or his way of trying to get out of this contract was that his treatment from Adidas during the period that he's been injured, which he's been injured a lot over the last year and a half, he's actually currently injured Injured, which is why we haven't seen a lot of on-field details with what Rafinha is actually going to wear after all of this has been settled. But his argument here is that the support he's gotten from the Adidas brand while he's been injured has not been what he expected. And I'm going to assume, and I don't know this for sure, that within the contract that he has signed, if he's not playing, he's probably not being paid or at least not being paid as much, which is perfectly understandable and safer on Adidas's part in the contract in that why would they pay a guy millions of dollars to wear their boots if he's not actually gonna be playing. If he's out on the sidelines injured, not wearing the boots, then it's kind of meaningless for them to be paying this guy to wear their products if he's not actually wearing them in a match for anybody to see, because it's ultimately just advertising here. So that was kind of his grounds of trying to get out of this, and obviously the judge did not go for that. He now is signed to Adidas for, I believe, another five years. And it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens when he does come back from injury and what he ends up wearing. And I would totally understand Rafinha's side of the argument if he was signed to a really small brand that legitimately was just unable to provide him with quality products to wear, but he is signed to one of the biggest sportswear manufacturers in the world in Adidas. And I can assure you that Adidas has been providing him not only with just good boots, but custom boots exactly made to his liking. And very quickly, I just wanted to touch on the money side of this lawsuit because that is after all what this is all about. Adidas initially sued Rafinha here asking for a hundred thousand euros per day that he did not play in Adidas boots where obviously they did end up winning this lawsuit although the judge ordered a much lower dollar amount for Rafinha to pay as a fine. He does have to pay all of Adidas's legal fees which I'm going to assume are probably very expensive but basically it worked out to this that every day Rafinha does not wear Adidas boots he has to pay a fine of 10,000 euros to Adidas up to a total of 1 million euros, effectively meaning that technically he could not wear Adidas boots 100 times in total. He'd have to pay the million euro fee, but after that he would more or less be free to wear whatever he wants. I'm not sure if that's 100% accurate. I am clearly not a lawyer, but based on my understanding of how all of this works, technically he wouldn't have to wear Adidas boots if he's willing to pay the million euro fine, which I'm going to assume his entire endorsement deal, what he's actually owed, is probably around that dollar amount. So again, it'll be very interesting to see when Rafinha does come back from injury, what brand of football boots he ends up wearing. And just to be clear, if he does come back from injury and wears Adidas boots as he's contractually obligated to, he doesn't have to pay a single dollar. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. I'm actually really curious to hear what you guys think of this situation down below in the comments. Do you side with Rafinha? Do you side with Adidas? For me personally, it was in the contract 
contract, they sign the contract, they have to abide by the contract. It really is that simple. If you are ever signing a contract, whether it's a boot endorsement deal or anything, make sure you read what you're signing because once you've signed it, if you wanna get out of it, if you've pre-agreed to those terms, it's really, really hard and expensive to do and might even be impossible at the end of the day as proven by Rafinha by trying to get out of this Adidas contract that again, he signed. If you guys enjoyed this video and think that I have any chance of pursuing a career as a lawyer, be sure to support this video with a like. That helps me out tremendously. And if you did enjoy this video so much that you don't want to miss out on future content from me, I post a new video every single day. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. Any questions as always, leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear you can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well other than that guys thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one